and welcome to Dielectric Videos. Now today, I am actually going to be showing you a teardown and maintenance slash uh, inspection video of the device I am riding right now. Yes, it is the infamous hoverboard scooter. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be referring to this as a hoverboard, although as many will note, it does not in fact hover. It's a very fun apparatus and very useful apparatus for driving around. And uh, I've had this one for about seven months. I put approximately 400, uh, a little over 400 miles on it, 100 charge cycles of the battery, and I usually would ride it about three to five times per week. So today I'm going to be showing you uh, a little bit of inspection and repair because in that 400 mile range I have actually encountered a couple of small problems. For one thing, one of the LED lights on this has started to fail on the front side. Uh, it no longer makes full contact and intermittently disconnects. And for another thing, it uh, has accumulated quite a few rocks and particles of dirt inside which rattle around when I uh, go over bumps. And a third issue I'd like to look at, just to be sure there's no major problem, is that the battery life has started to shorten somewhat. I'm down to about 75% of the four, uh, four mile range that I used to be able to achieve when it was brand new. And I'm going to uh, just be checking to make sure the battery is aging normally and isn't showing any signs of premature failure or uh, signs of overheating. So I'll get down to the, uh, to the lab, get on the bench, and I'll show you this disassembly and teardown. All right, here we are back at the lab, and I have the hoverboard set up here, ready to be disassembled and uh, investigated on the inside. Now I should note that it is the right side light that has the problem that's failing, so that will be the one that we'll focus on to see if we can find a loose connection. Now just to show you where we're going to expect things to be located, this side here is where the battery compartment is. The battery will be located within here. This side here is where the motherboard is located. Uh, the main switching transistors the, and the motherboard are in this side. And of course, as we'll see in a minute, both sides have the appropriate tilt sensors and mount for, mounts for the wheel motors. So I'll start taking out these screws and I'll get back to you when all screws have been removed. I've now removed all the screws from the underside of the board. Now I'm going to just lift these covers off minding the location of the wires to make sure they don't uh, break off or become damaged. And I'll also lift off the battery compartment side as well. Now as you can see, there's a fair bit of dust inside here. It's uh, gotten a bit dirty from uh, usage on the road and in uh, dusty locations. Additionally, you can see there seems to be some wear patterns between the uh, underside of the battery compartment, which is held in place with some tape and the, uh, un the bottom side of the uh, outer housing. Now this here is the lighting fixture which seems to be having the problem. So that's definitely a point where, we're, uh, where I'm going to be looking. And I'm just going to be performing a general inspection on the battery and the circuitry surrounding it to make sure nothing looks like it's been overheating or out of the ordinary. The last thing I'll do is I'll take a can of uh, sprayed uh, difluoroethane or canned air to blow all the dust out, take a vacuum to get any larger rocks out, and then I'll pack it back up and give it a try. So I've connected the uh, offending light to the benchtop power supply, and it looks relatively stable. I don't see any signs of a problem. This suggests to me that possibly a loose connection at the board junction connection could be the reason why it was malfunctioning. So chances are just reseating the connections on both of these lights will assure that there shouldn't be a major problem in the future. Now an additional uh, step I'm going to take to look at this uh, is to inspect these wire connections and this battery compartment. Now when I was disconnecting the light, I noted that a fairly serious issue is present. The battery holder has completely sheared off of the actual chassis of the vehicle, resulting in the battery perpetually hanging down and compressing these wires against the underside of the plastic cover. Now this is a problem because if the battery rattles around as it's been doing, it can wear down until a failure occurs. So I will have to eventually either do a short-term temporary fix on this or make sure that I figure out a way to properly mount this battery, uh, this battery mount again to prevent any future problems with the battery. The next thing I'm going to do before I work on the battery is do a bit of vacuuming and spraying to get all the dust out of it. And then I'll return to you uh, once it's clean to take a closer look at the battery. 
I've cleaned the dust out of the hoverboard now, uh, and I, after inspecting the main board, I see that there's no significant problem with the main board. However, on one of these uh, position, uh, foot position sensors, I noted that the antenna wire had broken off. This is the part that allows the board to communicate with the remote control that it came with. Now, I'm not too concerned about that because I've never used that remote control. Something slightly more concerning, however, is the fault that's occurred with the battery. As you can see, this uh, mount, which goes over the top of the battery, has sheared off completely uh, from all four of its mounting screws. And as a result, the battery was left to just rattle around loosely in the, uh, in the compartment. Now, if you look closely, uh, you may not be able to see it well on the camera, but the uh, plastic coating around this is actually worn all the way down to the metal 18650 cells inside. Now, this is not ideal because it means that um, if the plastic starts to peel off and anything metal intrudes into it, it could cause a short circuit and could cause a, a problem with thermal events or just a general failure of the battery. So what I'm going to do is perform a relatively temporary solution, which is at first to tape over any uh, broken spots in the plastic with electrical tape. And to hold this bracket back on, I plan to uh, acquire some washers to put around the mounting screws that attach this to the board itself. Now that by no means will be a permanent solution, but it will make this last longer so that when I decide to upgrade the battery, which will need to happen anyway because of the reduced capacity of it, I might also buy another uh, one of these mounting brackets or fashion one myself out of plastic or metal and actually mount it up properly. So I'm going to go and get some washers that will fit these screws and complete that temporary repair using that solution. So. I have installed, reinstalled the battery. What I've done is I've actually acquired some washers which fit around the broken parts of the plastic, allowing these uh, screws to better hold the plastic uh, cover of the battery back on. Additionally, as you can see here, where the uh, surface of the battery sheathing was damaged from vibration, I put some electrical tape over it to insulate and to mechanically protect the battery from any, uh, anything causing it to come apart. On top of that, since I suspect this uh, bracket may fail at some point in the future, I've also placed some uh, foam weather stripping inside the underside of this hoverboard. That way, if the battery pops loose, it'll be able to rest on that foam rather than bang against the underside of the plastic. Now, this battery has already had 100 charge cycles on it, and since it is partially damaged, and it's not a Samsung approved battery, it's one of the uh, potentially hazardous ones, uh, I will eventually replace this. But for now, since I've, ex I've inspected it and determined that it hasn't been overheating or burned, and I have placed some precaution to prevent any further mechanical damage to the battery, I am going to continue using it as is until I get a replacement. So that was an overall teardown and inspection slash repair video of the hoverboard. I will go out and test it in a moment and we'll see how this works. Well, I've put it all back together and it is now working quite nicely. First thing I'll show you is when I get down, you see that both lights are fully operational. And another thing that uh, I noticed quite in particular is it's much smoother and much quieter. Now, a couple of the things that were in it that were making noise were some small pebbles, but in addition to that, what I didn't realize is the battery itself was rattling around, making it rough and, uh, and kind of shaky when you would ride, as if there was a giant piece of something in there. So now that I've mounted the battery properly, well, at least temporarily mounted it properly, and I've made sure that the uh, if it does come loose again, it's not going to hit the hard plastic below, it's riding much, much more smoothly, and I'm guessing it's going to be a lot more uh, robust in the long run because the battery will be less likely to burn through uh, if the plastic uh, severs enough for it to actually short circuit internally. So thank you for watching my teardown slash maintenance video, and I will see you next time.